So technology sector has obviously done really well in the United States, and then there's been waves of innovation, uh, particularly from personal computers and, and what happened with uh, the internet. And, and when you're successful and you build a big business in the US, we let you keep going. So just because you become really big and you dominate a market like Amazon does, for example, for uh, home delivery of, of, many, of many goods, um, the government doesn't come after you. They, they don't like it if you use that monopoly power in ways that are overly aggressive or ways that are disadvantageous to consumers or, or to business partners. But if you're just big and successful, that's actually fine. That's something that's encouraged in the United States. And that's where the billionaires have come from. Some people call them tech oligarchs. And the word oligarch, of course, implies that you're not just active in the economic sphere, but you're also exerting some sort of political presence and political pressure. And that is, frankly, what quite a few of these billionaires are doing currently. So on the one hand, it, it reflects success in business. It reflects a particular attitude towards regulation. In fact, we don't really constrain size in the United States. We like competition, we like entry, we like new challenges, and we sometimes think that will take care of companies becoming too big because if they're making a lot of money, someone else will enter the business and competition will drive those profits down. But the reality is that just the way, dynamic, the, way the dynamics work in, uh, around the tech sector, and, and digital dynamics in particular, you, you get to very big very soon, and then it's hard for people to take it away from you because you're a platform like Twitter, formerly known, X, formerly known as Twitter, or like Amazon or like Facebook. Uh, so these platforms have a power that is unusual and not that similar to what we've seen in, in the pre-digital economy. So I think we're going to have to confront this. We're going to have to think about the economics. We're going to have to think about the way in which these companies develop technology, who's favored by that technology, uh, where do they pay taxes, because a lot of these uh, tech companies manage to park their profits offshore and not pay very much tax. And, and now we have to think about the political influence as well, because if you've got a huge amount of economic power, you put that into politics and then you use those, that, that political influence to get yourself more economic advantage through government contracts or through reducing regulation or through tilting rules and, and laws in your favor. That's a problem, right? Because then new entrants can't come in. You, your profits are not gonna get competed away. The oligarchs will become stronger and richer. And, and the rest of the country will not do that well. So these are live policy issues. I, I don't think anybody has easy answers for them right now, but I, I think the, the events of the past couple of years have, have reinforced that this is not likely to go away by itself. So the development of AI right now is a super competitive business and, and it's being driven by some incumbents, so Microsoft's a big player, and some new companies like OpenAI, of course, Microsoft and OpenAI are working together, so you wonder how that's going to play out. But as long as it's competitive, as, as long as uh, companies are, are, are sort of pushing at the margins, and, and we have some Chinese um, competition too, for example, DeepSeek captured headlines. So as long as you've got that competition, you'd think that the profits would be driven down and you'd think that the consumers will get a, a better deal. Now, if there's consolidation, if one or two companies end up winning big, if one company dominates the market, if it has 90% market share, then you would expect less good outcomes. So I think honestly we don't yet know. Is AI going to be disruptive of existing oligarchy around the tech sector? Or is it going to bring competition? Is it going to decentralize opportunity? Or is it going to use what people call the, the hyperscale of this technology in such a way that only one person or two people end up controlling even more, not just of the tech sector, but of the non-tech -se sector? And, and, and what does that do to our um, economic possibilities and what does that do to our political future? These, these are really big uh, open-ended questions that, that we absolutely need to grapple with.